Hello everyone, I'm Ronald Mehta and welcome back to our channel digiate.com. We are your digital aid and we provide free courses on the subjects of business and marketing. Let's start with sourcing of products. What is sourcing of products? The practice of researching a company and its supplier spending profile is known as sourcing. This aligns with the needs of the company and those of its suppliers. Sourcing of products is a method for evaluating and improving a company's purchasing activities on a regular basis. It is an institutional procurement procedure. Sourcing builds supply chains that are not only the lowest cost but also the lowest overall cost. Moving on to some case studies in the gamut of sourcing. Starting with the first one on IKEA, its presence in India and China as far as sourcing is concerned. For over 35 years, IKEA has employed Indian suppliers for its global operations. It works with about 60 manufacturers and 4 million people in the supply chain in India. IKEA is also involved in working with social entrepreneurs and getting close to 1200 local artisans involved in creating one-of-a-kind collections for their worldwide stores. If you look at the sourcing in China, IKEA's supply chain in China represents 38% of its global productivity in volume. From its entry into China 30 years ago, IKEA has grown into a company with product development, production and retail, owing 30 retail outlets and more than 400 furniture and home furnishing suppliers and service providers on the Chinese mainland creating nearly a million jobs. Moving on to Nike. Nike has over 700 factories around the world from where it sources its products. Each item travels from 57 distribution centers across a network of 18,500 accounts and 140,000 retail outlets. However, Nike does not own any footwear or apparel manufacturing facility. These account for roughly 88% of its revenue. Instead, the manufacturing process is outsourced to third parties due to the benefits of doing so. Independent contract manufacturers operate numerous factories and produce Nike's footwear outside the United States. Moving on to a case study of Zara where it utilizes the make and buy approach, a mix of both. Zara produces the more fashionable and riskier items which need testing and piloting in Spain, uh, its headquarters. It outsources production of more standard designs with more predictable demand to Morocco, Turkey and Asia to reduce their production cost. Smart move. As stated before, the more fashionable riskier items are manufactured at a company-owned factories in Spain, Northern Portugal and Turkey. Clothes with longer shelf life, that is the one with more predictable demand patterns such as basic t-shirts are outsourced to low-cost suppliers, mainly in Asia. Moving to another case study of Walmart. Now, Walmart has been associating with Indian suppliers for more than 15 years. India is already known as Walmart's major sourcing countries with annual exports worth $3 billion. Through the Bangalore Global Sourcing Office, which was established way back in 2002, Indian-made apparel, homeware, jewellery, hardlines and other popular items are now available to customers in 14 markets across the world. In the year 2020, Walmart made a decision to purchase $10 billion worth of Indian-made items each year by 2027. That's a big move. The new export aim for Walmart is to help small, medium and large-scale businesses in India to grow. Flipkart Samarth and Flipkart Vriddhi Supplier are two simultaneous development initiatives by Walmart in the Indian market for sourcing of their products. So moving on to why is strategic sourcing important for your business or any business for that matter? First, ideal suppliers are optimized. It's critical to assess a supplier's fundamental skills, their profiles and so on. This allows for strategic sourcing in the corporate environment. Next, relationships with suppliers are built in the long run as you saw in the case of Walmart. Strategic sourcing helps an organization develop long-term connection with suppliers. A long-term connection demonstrates to suppliers that they are significant and considered in many purchasing decisions. Next, obviously higher degree of cost savings. The most apparent benefit that businesses receive from strategic sourcing is cost saving. Firms must search for and select suppliers who offer the best value at the right price. Next, lower the risk involved. Beyond compliance checks, strategic sourcing lowers risk in the supply chain. Organizations sometimes have a pre-vetting procedure as in they check their supplier. It examines if suppliers' financial stability as well as the company's responsibility. And finally, objectives for business and sourcing are more consistent. Sourcing in an organization must be in line with corporate goals. This is the crux of any strategic sourcing strategy. Moving on to strategic sourcing process. Now the process entails six broad steps and they are First, identifying the source of supply. Next, contacting and evaluating the source of supply. Negotiating with the source of supply. Placing the purchase order and the requirements in it. 
establishing good vendor relations, and finally analyzing your vendor performance. Now let's take a quick stab at each one of them briefly. Let's start with the first one, identifying the sources of supply. The first step in the sourcing process is to figure out where your source of supply will come from, the domestic market or maybe the international market. Visiting central markets, trade shows and expositions might help you locate domestic suppliers. Finding new suppliers may also be done through trade shows. Aside from purchasing within the domestic market, an organization may look for foreign sources of supply where goods can be obtained. As you saw in the case of IKEA and Walmart, they both are based in different countries, Walmart having their headquarters in the US, IKEA being a Swedish retailer. But the point is, for sourcing, they have come to the Indian market and the Chinese market. The sourcing of goods from around the world is now a reality for businesses as retailers now work in the global marketplace. Costs associated with global sourcing include, first mainly is the foreign currency fluctuation, import tariffs of the country that is importing goods, cost of carrying inventory and transportation cost. Now moving on to the second step in sourcing that is of contacting and evaluating sources of supply. The method of contact the supplier may be as simple as having a representative come to the workplace and meet with the buyer as in the retailer to show a selection of products. This is frequently referred to as a vendor initiated contact. The alternative way of contacting sources of supply is known as retailer initiated contacts. This might be as simple as having the buyer to go to one of the major marketplaces. Now, a decision must be made regarding prospective vendors. So we have to keep in mind the following criteria. First, the market for whom the items will be purchased. Second, the picture of the retail corporation as in the link between the product and the image of the organization, the goods and the price offered, terms and services provided by the vendor, vendor's track record and dependability, and finally, identifying the right vendor. Moving on to step three is negotiating with the vendors. The following are the types of discounts that could be available to the buyer from the vendor depending on the kind of goods purchased and the volume purchased. That's where the negotiation kicks in. So the types of discount are, first is the trade discount. Second is the chain discount. Third is the quantity discount, which is typically offered if the buyer or the retailer purchases a large volume. Seasonal discount, depending on the season. If there's an off season, there's a major discount given. And finally is the cash discount if the payments are made in cash. Step number four, placing the purchase order. Now, while you do that, you need to keep in mind the following. First, name of the purchaser, name of the manufacturer and the supplier, the delivery address, the invoice address, the price of the products, the quantity ordered, the delivery date, and finally terms of payment and delivery. Once this is in place, we go to step number five, that is establishing good vendor relation. As we understood from our previous case studies in case of Nike, Walmart, or Ikea, that maintaining vendor relation works a long way. Therefore, for a long time, retailers have been hesitant to share information with their suppliers. However, nowadays, many businesses collaborate with their suppliers as a team in order to gain a competitive advantage. This may even block a competitor firm entering the market in case of access to good suppliers in a country. Shared information is critical to this new strategy only if the correct data is shared with the correct people for the right reasons. To do so, the merchant must first recognize the significance of both sides' trading connections. And finally, at number six, analyzing your vendor performance. Now that is done based on several criteria, and that is number one, the yearly sum of orders made on the vendors. Next, the total number of returns to the vendor as well as the quality of the goods. The initial markup at which a company sells a product. Markdowns. Vendor participation in different schemes and performance. Transportation costs in case borne by the retailer. Cash discounts that the vendor offers. The merchandise sales performance. And finally, consideration of both quantitative and qualitative factors during this evaluation. So that's it folks. This brings an end to the topic on sourcing of products. These are the list of sources and links referred to for our content in the video. Thank you and stay tuned for our more videos.